Welcome back to the King of Random. If you liked Grant's original blowgun, today is gonna blow your mind with the power we're gonna pack into this bad boy. Also, once we get this thing built, we're gonna have a super fun competition with a very special guest. Let's get into it. All right, so we need kind of a few things. I'll put all these in the description, but let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the build. First thing we're gonna do so we're gonna take this two inch slip cap for PVC and we're gonna drill a hole a half inch that is just big enough for our bike valve to be able to pop into there so that we can add some compressed air. Now when we drill this hole, we wanna be really, really careful because the bit will like to drift. There we go. And we just kinda of need to clean out this stuff right here, we don't want any excess material that is going to get in the way of having a good seal. So we'll just gently take off these burrs. Don't get too aggressive here. Just nice and gentle will totally do it. We wanna make sure all the debris is out. We want this chamber nice and clean. All right, next we'll just grab our file. And because we want nice good contact right on the outside, we just have to file right around this hole. So it looks a little dirty, but it's pretty smooth right now. It's exactly what we want. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna insert this valve through the bottom, grab some pliers, and just pull this on through. There we go. I'm just gonna kinda tweak it all the way around to make sure this ring is popped all the way up, all the way around. So now we're gonna build our compression chamber. We're gonna take our cap with our valve stem in there, this is an 18 inch piece of two inch PVC. We've got to put our slip coupler in there. And this is our adapter that goes from two inches down to one inch threaded. So we're gonna put all this together now. We're gonna need some PVC glue and some primer. I do like this 725 by Weld On. It's extremely fast setting. And this stuff is boss when it comes to PVC. And because it makes a ginormous mess, I've just got a drop cloth here. You can use anything and I'm gonna glue over the top of all this. Because this is our compression chamber, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we do this really, really well. So we're gonna prime each surface, we're gonna get a good coat, and then I will show you how to make sure you get an amazing seal. So you want to cover both sides of the connection, and you don't want extra stuff in there to be dripping around. Make sure you visually check so that it's totally covered. And we want this to dry just a little bit so that it gets tacky, but we don't want it to be completely dry. So we'll set this to the side and we can start priming some of these other connections as well. All right, so you gotta watch out for little drips like this because here it's still gonna be wet and so if there's gonna be a point of failure, it's gonna start right there. So you can either blow on it or you can just gently wipe that so you remove the excess wet spots. And so this is ready to go. And so is this. The same principle holds with the glue. We're just gonna wanna make sure we cover the entire connection on both sides. And when you put it together, you're gonna make sure you give it to a quarter to a half a turn. And then hold for five to 10 seconds to make sure that it welds appropriately. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. The way we've built this compression chamber, it is gonna be able to hold a lot of pressure very safely. Let's move forward. Here we've got a standard sprinkler valve. This is just a one inch valve. It's thread by thread. And the way these work, there's a rubber diaphragm on the inside. And so when you push a bunch of water in here, there's two chambers and the pressure is gonna be equalized on both sides. And the valve opens up to let the water through when we unequalize the pressure. Or in this case, it's gonna be air that flows through. And there's a several ways you can do that. One is you can hook these up to the right electrical current and it'll open up this solenoid, that'll open it up. Or you can open this bleeder screw right here. Same thing, unequalizes the pressure and then it gets through. Or you could twist the solenoid. Same thing, so we've got three different ways to do this and I'll show you how to do them all. Now, if you have any issues with this down the road, it's not pushing through your pressure. This right here is a flow control. And so, yep, I've got it opened up all the way, but it might be tightened down and that'll stop your gun from functioning. 
So we're gonna take some Teflon tape and apply it to our one inch long by three inch nipple here. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. There is an art to Teflon tape. So if I am holding this in my left hand, I will start on the top and I will wrap it all the way around. And I really want just two or three layers in any given spot maximum. So that's plenty and you snap it off and then I kind of run my hands around it to make sure that stays. We'll do both sides. Teflon is a lubricant. And so you might think that the tape is filling up all the extra cracks and spaces so the air can't get through. And that's kind of true, but more than anything, what it's doing is it's lubricating these threads so that when we put it in here, it can slide in even further. Because it's really the thread on thread contact that's gonna keep the air from getting through. So now we're just gonna attach it to our compression chamber. And it's important that these connections are really tight so that the air cannot escape. Now, when I say that, we want to limit the places where the air can escape, but I'll tell you right now, this connection is not gonna be foolproof right here. The reason why that's good is because if we pressurize our chamber and then set our gun down and walk away a couple days later, somebody might come grab this, not realize it's pressured and get off a shot unintentionally. And we wanna avoid that. This will actually leak very slowly and decompress over time. Okay, I wanna tighten it down a little more, so I went and got some channel locks. So I'm satisfied with that. We've got the gun built, let's move on to the barrel. Very, very simple here. We're just gonna take this one inch male adapter and we don't need any primer on this one because there's no compression going on here. We just need the parts to stick together. Now this piece is actually optional. This is a one inch female adapter. I just like the way it looks on the end of the barrel. So I'm gonna pop this on, but you totally don't have to do it. We'll just thread this on here and it's really this easy. Technically, the gun could be done right now. We could pressurize this chamber with an air compressor and then you could use your bleeder screw or your solenoid and then be able to fire it that way. But we're gonna go ahead and add a switch to it with a battery so that we can just do it with the flip of a switch. Technically, the gun is completely done right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize it and fire it and show you that, but then I wanna upgrade it just a little bit more. I got it up to 80 PSI, so I'm just gonna open this little bleeder screw. <laughs> That's pretty loud, but let's upgrade it one more time. Setting it off with the bleeder screw was a lot of fun, but why don't we hack it just a little bit and let's add a switch. So we're gonna take our 14 gauge wire and we'll just strip the ends off of this. And here I've got my 20 volt battery for some power tools and I'm just gonna shove the wires into these connections here. Now this is just 20 volts. Nothing's gonna happen here. It's totally safe. So don't worry about any of that. Now let's tape it down so they don't fall out. So I've got a little contact switch here and this turns on when I depress. So we're gonna hook this into one side, it doesn't matter which one. Here's our wires from our solenoid. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna connect one to the switch and then one to our other contact. And now it's all wired up. When I depress this switch, it opens up our solenoid right here. For ease of use, we're just gonna tape this battery to our gun. So I want the switch somewhere that's easy to reach. So I'll just put it right on top of this battery. Let's see if this feels comfortable. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. Before we shoot this, we have to make some ammunition, so let's get to it. Here's the original dart that Grant made, and here's what we're doing today. All right, so we've got our cardstock, and all I'm gonna do is cut it into quarters. Prep a piece of tape. We're gonna grab this corner and twist it over and just roll it in on itself. And we've got our funnel. 
All right, so we've got our inch and a half roofing nail here, and we're just gonna drop it right into our funnel and make sure we poke it down just a little bit so we can grab it. So what we've left is we've left some space down in there so that we can get some hot glue around that nail. We'll get the hot glue right around that nail head. And now we're just gonna grab that and drag it down. And now it really helps if you have an extra piece of PVC that is the same size as your barrel. That way you can stuff your dart down in there and it'll be sized perfectly. So we're just gonna fill this with a little more hot glue. We wanna make sure that we stay just below the rim of that PVC. There we go. Here on the inside, we're just gonna drop our scissors down to where it meets the glue and we're gonna slice it. Now the reason why we've cut this is so that when we load it, we can push it and those are gonna to fold together and we're gonna get a whole lot of compressed air that's gonna catch that whole thing. It's gonna be able to utilize a lot more of that compression. We got our ammo, we got our gun, let's go test it out. We're loading our dart. We're just gonna take this ramrod and we're gonna gently push this down to the bottom. There we go. Now we're gonna fill it with air. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow, that shredded that thing. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, I've tested it, it works. It's about time to get to our competition, but first, here comes our special guest, Janae Thompson. You know her as Grant's wife. She's working hard behind the scenes here at King of Random, and today we have got her back out front. Because we have to be competitive when it comes to darts because if we weren't what would be the point of this video other than Grant did a really good job making darts but we have to amplify Ooh. what he's done which Jerem has done and done well and he thinks he's gonna beat me in the competition he thinks that he has expert aim you're gonna get demolished today Whatever. <laughs> all right Janine yeah how about we do some test fires that's a great idea I'm up for it if we squeeze down all these little feathers here and then we twist it as it goes in, it gets past that transition point really easily. And we take our ramrod and very gently take it to the end. There's quite a bit of finesse in that twist. And now we're ready to go. You want to try it bazooka style? That's kind of fun. Bazooka style it is. As far as my aim, the way I have it lined up with my eyeball, it's exactly dead center to the red spot. Jerem says I'm too high. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. Ah! <laughs> that was good. Look, that see how close right you above. were? Yeah, that was great. It was right here. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> so now let me clarify. My experience with pressurized weaponry is not shooting at myself. It's watching Grant do it. <laughs> I'm going to dominate. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I've gotten closer every single time. You have. I'd be careful what you, you say. Have. We're ready to begin our competition. We're each going to take five shots, and whoever loses has to complete a challenge or something embarrassing, and you guys get to decide. So make sure you let us know in the comments. We'll hit that in a future video. It's got to be fun and keep it G rated. Twisting with finesse, as Jerem has demonstrated. Hey, Jerem, can you give me that ramrod? <laughs> Thank you. <You're> welcome. <laughs> Okay, first shot goes to Janae. Three, two, one. Ah! Woo! I mean, that was great. Where did I shoot? That was really good, look. That was in the black ring next to the red. Okay? Yeah, look That's at that. the closest ring you can be in without a bullseye, just so everyone knows that. All right, and we've also only charged these to 60 because that way they won't blow straight through the plywood. Three, two, one. Look at it! That was a little closer to the red than mine was. <laughs> Just a little. I told you they're all gonna be there. Three, two, one. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's way up there. That is perfectly in the middle of the second black ring. I'm very proud of that shot. <laughs> Looks beautiful. Shot number two. Three, two, one. That was really accurate as far as being in the red. Three, two, 
One. Oh. Whoa! Was that the same spot or is that a little above? I think you smashed it right here. Okay, yeah, right, yep, right, right there. in there. Yep. Third shot. Three, two, one. Whoa, it's on top of the other one. Did you see that? Jeez. That's impressive. <laughs> it's literally in the same hole. <laughs> Robin Hood, baby. <laughs> oh, that's a good shot. Three. Two. Mm -hmm. One. Whew. What the heck? Where did that go? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, right here. So it looks like the nail oh. actually went straight through. And the rest of the dart bounced back that way. Okay. Yeah. Why would it bounce back? Uh, because these are made from hot glue. Which the is glue essentially is rubber. bouncy. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, and so it likes to push back. These are bouncy darts. That could be a dangerous thing. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> you, I missed the red. I missed the red. <laughs> but you knocked your red out. That's true. Look at that. It was so close. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> That's impressive. What I want to see is right here. All right. I'll do that next time. If I can just get it in the red, I'm going to be proud of myself. All right, Janine. Last shot. Last shot. Why don't we kick up the stakes? Whoever does the best on this shot, all or nothing, winner take all. All or nothing, okay. Let's go. Well, that would be a little more fair since this will be my sixth shot and you've had like a thousand. So Maybe. this is my Maybe. most experienced shot. So based on that, it's more fair. I'm still gonna win. In three, two, one. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> In the red, baby. <laughs> Let's see if Jerem can beat that. Because okay. his last shot did not. No, it didn't. <laughs> and let me just validate this pin is going to show up really well because we're in the red there, baby. In the red. <laughs> and the black. Okay, come on, Jerem. You Three, got it. You got it. Two. You're going to do great. One. Keep going. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> that was not as good as I had hoped. <laughs> Ooh, okay, all right. Actually, I guess right. I should say that was better than I had hoped. Guess what? <sighs> right there! Janae, I can't tell. Is this closer than your shot or farther away? Well, considering that they're both in the red, I'd say they're equally as valuable. But see how there's a little dot in the center and it's <laughs> like, you know, we could just measure off of that. See? See? Yeah, I mean, depending <laughs> on how you want to measure it, red is red, right? So... <laughs> But, but, but let's also consider, how many times have you done this, Jerem? How many shots have you taken? I, look, look, my just, experience, just, your just, experience just got ball, nothing to do with ballpark. anything. Just, I don't know why ballpark. you would lean on me. <laughs> just ballpark. Let's just give a number so the audience can, can uh, compare At this. least six. At least six. At least. And how many more than six do you think would be in that number? If you were to guess, <laughs> high, high, high and low range. Um, Between six and... A thousand? A thousand? Okay, a thousand. <laughs> That's what you get after a thousand shots, everybody. But this right here is what you get after six shots, okay? So you guys decide who has more natural skill. <laughs> Thank you so much, Janae, for joining me today. It was super fun. Thanks for inviting me into one of Grant's previous projects that was a family favorite. And upping the ante on it, that was epic. <laughs> and remember, everybody, let the random happen.